nights are long on the St. Lawrence River. We're well into spring, but the layer of ice is still thick, up to 80 centimetres in some places. The Martha Black goes up and down this part of the river between three rivers and Montreal. This icebreaker belonging to the Canadian Coast Guard and its 50 crew have spent the winter clearing the shipping lane and escorting freighters. The danger is, if a lump of winter ice breaks away and gets into the channel, that would be the problem we'd have to face. Given that we're getting days that are warmer and warmer, and they're forecasting rain for tomorrow, so there's a risk that the water level will rise, and that can create cracks in the ice, especially in the next few days when winds of around 20 knots are forecast. We could be busier than usual in the next few days. So during the deep cold of winter, one of the longest rivers in the world becomes hostile territory. But for others, it's just one vast playground where you can measure yourself against the elements. In her house on the riverbank, Lynn White is going through the morning ritual. With all the snow that fell during the night, and in view of the falling temperatures, this captain of the Three Rivers Coast Guard knows she could be in for a busy day. Her bosun, Piero, is already on the road towards the city harbour, where a big package is waiting for him. Perched aboard a freighter, this strange machine has arrived straight from England, where it was built. Custom made for the Canadian Coast Guard. It's not a boat. We're sailors, but it's not a boat. It's a sort of hybrid between a plane and a boat. It makes a lot of noise, but it does an extraordinary job. We're going to fit her out to her own taste. We're going to modify her so that, so that she'll be pleasant to work with, so she'll be kind to us because she'll take on a personality. This machine here is going to turn into a character. Well, it's impressive. Somebody said it was uh, built in England and it cost $17 million. The giant metal insect takes its first steps on the ice of the St. Lawrence. It's a vehicle riding on cushions of air that can sail at over 50 knots. There are less than a dozen of them in the world. A little later at the Three Rivers base, Piero has joined his crew on the old Wabanaki. While he supervises maneuvering, Lynn White is at the helm. Piloting such a machine is far from easy. It's a bit like driving a car flat out on a skating rink. As it glides, the Wabanaki creates a wave, and this wave will deform and then break the layer of ice. Oh, 
We try to push the wave laterally so as to increase the width of the ice field that we can break. If the ice is a little flexible, it breaks. So independently of the size of the wave that we can create, the amount of ice we can break with the wave depends upon the thickness. During the summer months, the hovercraft specialise in rescue work because they can move over very shallow water. During the winter, their main mission is to break the ice off the banks of the St. Lawrence so that it can be carried out to the ocean by the current. The hydrocraft belonging to the Coast Guard have all been given Indian names. You have the Wabanaki, which means the people of the rising sun. As I was saying, you have the Superwind, which means river bear, and you're going to see the Mamilosa, which means that which passes from the water to the bank, or the other way around. We'll have to check. The magical thing about this machine is that it has no draft. So we go into places that even a tiny launch can't go. We go, I had a good friend in Tadoussac who said, who came along with us and said, I was raised here and I'm seeing places that I've never seen before because you couldn't get here. It was too dangerous with those tides. A few miles away, the Martha Black is underway. At this time of the year, most of the Canadian icebreakers are part of the team clearing the river of ice. It's nine in the morning, and a woman leaves her little cabin on the captain's orders. Mireille Sampson is the first and only woman helicopter pilot in the Canadian Coast Guard. Well, there's a lot of ice breaking away from the lake, and they're worried it will block up at the bridge. So that's why we're going to take a look over on Lake Saint-Pierre to see if it's moving well, if it's moving well in the navigable channel. When she sets out on a reconnaissance mission, Mireille is always accompanied by an ice observer, Lucy. Twice a day, they fly over the critical zones of the St. Lawrence. The helicopter is the first link in the ice-clearing chain. The two women can read the state of the ice from its color. They scan the cracks, and most important, they alert the authorities whenever they see a sheet of ice adrift. Mireille is in constant contact with the Ice Bureau, situated on the shores of Quebec City. Although covered in ice from December to April, the St. Lawrence remains accessible all year round. 20,000 shipping movements are recorded there. These men are for the most part former captains of icebreakers, they control all the sea and river traffic in Quebec. I suggest a possible change in the route there to take the route a little further to the north. What we're interested in is the circulation. The ice has to move. It has to move with the current. That means right now to make sure that the ice circulates freely in the channel, because if the ice stops, then it forms a sort of barrage, and the water level rises, and then we can get floods in the towns, etc., etc. That's the priority in this particular sector. A hundred and thirty kilometers upstream at Three Rivers, Mireille touches down at the hovercraft base. The clearing of the ice on Lake Saint-Pierre will begin in a few minutes. 
When the hovercraft breaks all those pieces of ice for hours, it looks like a puzzle because there are thousands of pieces of ice floating around. If you join them all up into one, it would look like an ice cap. It's very beautiful to see, but it makes for quite precarious conditions to monitor because sometimes there are dangers. If there are big pieces of ice not sufficiently broken up, we report them and they go out and break them into smaller pieces. This part of the St. Lawrence River is particularly sensitive because there is a bridge. All the time you're at the controls of a hovercraft, you have to be aware of everything around you. The traffic, the ice, the winds, the people on the ice, because it sometimes happens that a ski do comes out to see what you're doing, which isn't a very good idea, but it happens. So you have to be aware of everything going on around you. For hours, the crews of the hovercraft work the 300 square kilometers of Lake Saint-Pierre. During these ice clearing operations, the crew of the Wabanaki often make do with a quick lunch. Oh, fine dining on board. <laughs> On the bridge of a naval ship, you can have 12 officers, the captain, three second officers. When we're six for lunch here, we're really packed in. We can't play around. You don't talk to the captain and then the captain has his cabin, his mess room. We don't have all that here. But Lynn is still Captain Lynn. Lynn's the captain and we know she's the captain. And what sort of captain is Lynn? Is she strict? She keeps me in line. Now, she's a very human person. That's one of the first, the most important things. Being a sailor is also being human, too. It's the captain who decides. It's the captain who decides. But she's not next to God, especially when you don't believe in God. <laughs> After 20 years' service, the old Wabanaki has undertaken its last mission on the ice of the St. Lawrence. There's a little tug of the heartstrings this evening for Captain Lynn White. It was my first hovercraft. I learnt. I cut my teeth aboard. So for sure, it's going to be a little painful to see her go. It's a machine that's quite old, but it's a good workhorse. And then, with a little bit of maintenance, it will serve for a few more years, I'm sure. In a few weeks, the Webernaki will leave the St. Lawrence River for a far destination. With a new crew, it will continue its rescue missions and end its days in the swamps of the Indian Ocean. <laughs>